Welcome! Today I am going to give you a tutorial on combat in Foundry Virtual Tabletop. The first thing you need to do in combat is roll initiative. You can roll initiative for your character by first adding them to the combat tracker. That happens by right clicking your character and clicking the, two shield, the shield and two swords icon. This will add your character to combat. As a dungeon master you need to do this for the other characters as well. That means you go to the NPCs and you add them to combat. Next thing you do is, as a player, you can go over here and you can click the initiative button, roll initiative, in order to roll initiative for your character. The game master has the option to roll initiative for all, or roll initiative for all NPCs. So you can take this out of the control of your players if you wish to do so. For controlling your characters, first you have to make sure that the weapons that your characters want equipped are equipped. You can go to the inventory and observe all of the weapons equipment and consumables and other items that they have and make sure that they are indeed present. If they are not present, then you need to go over to the compendium, go to items, and you need to find the items you need to bring over to equip your weapons. For example, if you wanted a battle axe, you simply drag and drop this over to your character sheet. After you have your weapons equipped, you should see those weapons on the heads up display. If you click on your character, left click on your character, and you look on the top left hand screen, you'll see a heads up display that shows all the items, spells, features, skills, and all the other aspects of your character that you have equipped. For example, Biero has a rapier and dagger equipped, but it looks here that the rapier is equipped. Now if we see here, there is no dagger because the dagger is not equipped. But if we hit this shield icon, then it is plain that the dagger is equipped and it will now show up on the heads up display. After doing that, you are ready to begin fighting. After you roll initiative, the dungeon master will click begin combat. When combat begins, the initiative tracker will pop up on the lower right hand side of your screen. This is an easy display. Next to it will be the text box. This will show all the roles that you perform in combat to hit or to roll damage or to roll initiative. Some players enjoy using this combat encounters tab to track initiative, but I enjoy using the text chat. It's simply a preference. Next thing you do is you go to the top of initiative and have each person perform their turn in order. So for example, if you click on this character, you'll center on it, and this is Rimsum. So for Rimsum, we are gonna take a look at the inventory and we can see that they have a rapier and a short sword. First, you must right click a character who you wish to target and if you target this bear, right click it, and then you hit this bullseye button here that will target that character for an attack, for a spell, for whatever ability that you wish. In this case, I'm using my short bow to fire an arrow at that bear. Firing the short bow, it will automatically show whether or not I hit in the right hand side. With a 13 rolled, I, it automatically calculates that I was able to hit the bear and deal six damage to the bear. I'm using a shortcut that automates this process in order to speed up combat. The armor class of the bear is 11, the roll is 13, and automatically assigns damage. Next, after your turn is done, say you're done, and click end turn, or next turn. This is very important for the dungeon master so that they don't have to question players when their turn ends. When it's your turn, simply click on your character, this will center the screen on your character. Next. As an alternative to targeting, you don't need to right click and hit the bullseye. Instead, you could always alt, press and hold alt key and left click in order to target a character. For example, parent. I'm pressing and holding alt and I left click the target. Parent, press and hold alt and left click the target. Crusk. And I can do the same thing on a character I've already targeted in order to untarget them. So this bear is going to come over and it is going to use its bite attack on Tusk. It's going to roll this time at advantage and it's going to find out if we hit or not. We roll the 16 which misses. Done. Next bear to come up. I'm going to target Crusk again. Bear goes over, walks over, and with the swipe of its paws, it will strike. Go over here to the heads up the play. Select Claws and it will automatically roll the attack. This time I'll say it rolls at disadvantage. With 18, sorry, 17, it will miss. Done. 
I'm gonna go to the next bear. Don't know where that is. Center the screen. Found out where it is. Target player. Done. And then go. And we will do a bite attack. Bite attack, chomping down on the player's neck. The player attempts to dodge. He succeeds. Done. This is how quickly combat should progress in your games if your players have learned this tutorial. One aspect that your characters might wish to consider is what happens when they need to conduct a spell, or what happens when they need to, act, for example, activate a feature, such as Lay on Hands. Well, you can do the same exact thing. Let's skip over to Biero. Biero is a magician. So we are going to target this bear. It's Biero's turn. Biero is going to use one of his spells. He will use, he will use Hideous Laughter. And so Hideous Laughter, we go over here, we took a look at his spells. We can see that he doesn't indeed have Hideous Laughter equipped. Why is that the case? And we can see that indeed you need to prepare your spells. If you hit these prepare buttons, the spells will now be added to your HUD heads up display. And you take a look at spells, they are now introduced. Now we simply need to go to your spells target Hideous Laughter. We've already targeted the bear, selecting Hideous Laughter and it will activate. So we can sing the spell spot or we do not. I'm not going to do that, but normally you would. Okay, and now there's an automatic wisdom saving throw from the bear. As a dungeon master or as a player, you can just click this roll button and it will automatically apply it. We can see that the bear did succeed and is not affected by Hideous Laughter. Excellent. That's an example of spell casting. Now what if we wanted to activate an ability? Let's say that Crusk decided to come over here and the arrow was hurt. The arrow took a lot of damage and you can automatically apply damage using this bar. Simply type in the number of damage, the amount of damage that you take, and hit this down button in order to take the damage. Once they're killed, you can set the player as dead using that icon, or you can bring them back to life using this icon. Or if they are damaged, but you healed them for a certain amount, simply click this heal the selected character to up arrows button in order to heal them for the appropriate amount. Now let's say that Biero has taken a sufficient amount of damage, 8 damage, and Krusk wants to target that character with Lay on Hands, a common paladin ability. He would go over here into Features, find Lay on Hands, and he would use that ability on Biero. As we can see, it will automatically display the ability, and it will tell us how much he expends. Well, in this case, I'm going to say that he expends 5, so you can simply type in 5 in here, and Piero can add that to his health bar. Done. What if Crust wanted to do a different ability? A different feature? Well, for example, perhaps he wants to do uh, a Savage Attack, Local Champion perhaps, Half Orc. He can show his features here. Now, Piero has a ability as a Bard. It's called Bardic Inspiration. Now, let's say that the arrow wanted to use that ability and target Krusk. Well, the arrow would simply go target Krusk and hit Bardic Inspiration and consume ability. Now that he's used it, we can show this press this button here in order to consume the Bardic Inspiration. Now it would improve whatever ability check that Krusk was using by the appropriate role given here, which is three. Okay, we covered initiative, we've covered um, combat, we've covered spell casting, we've covered features. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope this was helpful.